Why is it floral? Does it have a scent? I have no idea. This is inside. His sin in the membrane. His sin in the printer. Yo, who knows that song? This is insane. Whew, that was, it wasn't looking too good in the beginning. But I got it, yeah, that way. Remember when quarantine happened and heaven was, became popular? I still wear mine, praise God. I really could and sometimes, is this crooked? Ooh, around the clay, girl. Around the clay, girl. It was a good trick. Is that how it goes? What are the words? All right, all right. So in this video, we are going to be trying out for the first time the Dior Forever Matte Foundation. This is transfer proof, 24 hour wear. It says it's high perfection, concentrated floral skincare with sunscreen. I don't know what all that means. Obviously it's a skincare foundation product, but why is it floral? Does it have a scent? I have no idea. I have not opened this yet. I have the shade 9N. I just picked it offline. There aren't a lot of dark shades, which is to be expected, unfortunately, with these luxury brands. It is hydrated but matte, long wearing, medium coverage, and has SPF in it. Now, although it has SPF in it, I'm not going to bank on this being my only SPF protection because it's simply not enough, right? We're not putting on loads of this foundation. We're just applying enough to get the coverage that we want. This is $54 at Sephora. And let's try this out. The good thing is that it comes with a pump. We love a good Dior monogram wherever we can get that. I wanna know if it has an, a scent to it. Okay, I'm not gonna prime my face because I would just wanna see what this looks and feels like without a primer back of the hand this color looks good it could be darker but it looks good this is 9n so it is neutral and while I blend this foundation out how have you been I just wonder how have you been doing what's going on so this is looking like the house labs foundation that I tried on yesterday you should have already seen that video if not make sure you watch it I'm doing a lot of foundation review videos and it, it the shade looks the same so initially putting it on it's like what this is giving the wrong shade but when blended out it did look really good so let's blend this out okay and this is the darkest shade so if you are darker than me so sad and not gonna have your shade now what do we think about this coverage i think it looks really pretty it's not looking overly hydrating which i like i don't want to look wet it's not what I'm trying to do. I'm liking this, whoa. It does feel lightweight, which is nice. It's not thick. I reviewed the Black Opal foundation. Obviously it's a, it's a stick foundation, so duh, right there. It just tells you it's thick. I think it feels heavy on the skin. I did three pumps and I do not need all of that. This is a good color. Now that it's on my entire face, it is darker looking than I expected in a good way. Yo, now I have so many more foundation favorites. This is inside. His sin in the membrane. His sin in the printer. Yo, who knows that song? This is insane. You know, let's make sure it's blended well. Let's get really close. What are our thoughts so far? Nice natural glow. Light, the lights are reflecting off my skin, that's natural. Medium coverage for sure. I can still see a little bit of my skin, but in the best way. Like I can still see this blemish right there. Faint, very faint, but this looks really pretty. Wowzers, okay. For my concealer, I'm gonna use this Black Opal Brightening Concealer that I tried in that other video that I mentioned. And this is so nice, the shade is maple. It is more on the cool side, if you can see, but it works for a foundation like this because it's, in a way, balancing this out. Like I wouldn't want to put something so warm on with this foundation, which is neutral because the foundation to me is pulling more red and this concealer is more on the neutral side as well. If I were to use something more orange, like the one from Best Skin Ever, the Sephora collection, that concealer is really good too. This one is good too as well. Of course, a good drugstore option and this sponge. I'm gonna link sponges and all the products that I use below as well. Make sure you're following on all socials because when I'm not here, I am definitely on the other other social platforms. Of course, we're gonna highlight down the middle of the face and look into my left, which is your right. I have a mirror on my mirror. So I have a pull-out mirror on the big mirror here in the bathroom that I'm looking at to make sure that this is in the middle. Wow. <laughs> That was, it wasn't looking too good in the beginning, but I got it, yeah, that way. Blending under the cheek because that is certainly an advanced way to apply your highlight. So it's going to reverse highlight, right? Isolating out this space right here, making the cheekbones look more elevated. And then right here, the same. We're focusing on the top of the earlobe and going down, all right? I do this quickly because I'm used to this, but of course, if you are new, make sure you take your time. That might not be something that you do in the beginning. That's why I call it an advanced procedure or an advanced 
step because you're still trying to figure this whole thing out. You're not gonna wanna do this because when the face is all done, you'll see it's going to be very pronounced. And I like that. Maybe you do wanna do that, but make sure you practice it because it could look real wild if you are still getting familiar with all of this, you know? This is the KVD Vegan Beauty Good Apple Bomb Foundation and the color is 098, my goodness. <laughs> oh, and headband wig. Yes, ma'am. Remember when quarantine happened and headband wigs became popular? I still wear mine, praise God. This thing is so done, it's it's miserable. But I don't like to waste, man. When you grow up in poverty, what are you wasting for? Like, what? <laughs> it just pains me to be like, okay, in the trash, like what? There's no good product here, okay? Clearly, as you can see, it's coming out. <laughs> this brush is from It Cosmetics. And, oh, make sure that you take a look at my Amazon video where I actually did a full makeup look, eyeshadow included, and the eyeshadow look was bomb using a $40 Amazon brush set. So if you're still trying to build your brush wardrobe and you don't know what's going on and what to have and you're missing things, girl, go ahead and grab you that brush set, for instance, and then a makeup sponge or two or three or the Amazon sponge set that I like comes in a pack of five for less than $10. Go ahead and grab those two and then you gonna have what you need and then the rest is just knowing what the heck you doing. <laughs> oh, and getting the right shades, which I understand. Like I fully understand, okay? Blending this contour into my hairline. I do have braids, but we're not here for that, okay? We're just, I put the headband wig on because it just makes it easier for me to do my contour without having a, you know, full wig on. Like, come on, son. All this to say, get your contour into your hairline. That is very important. Your contour is gonna look insane if it's not blending into your hairline. This too is another advanced process, which is doing the nose contour. I do not advise this for you if you are a beginner. If you do this and you feel confident in how it comes out when you do it, comment and let me know because I just wonder how many of you who watch really are doing all of these steps or if you're just, you know, watching just to learn, watching just for entertainment. I'm just curious. Are you doing this nose contour? I want to know. This is a Sephora 57 brush. As you can see, it's fluffy. I'm pinching it on one end and then going down on the side so that I can get a real sharp sideline. If this is your first video, listen, I make things work. You feel what I'm saying? and we are going to do what today? Make it work, praise God. So I take a little bit of this. See how this is basically done? I mean, I went in the middle because I don't want too much product, but just enough that when it's on here, you can see it. And I don't go over this with powder, although I really could and sometimes, is this crooked? Oh my God, I had to look in the big mirror. I'm just like, it probably is crooked, honey. We gonna figure it out. We gonna work it out, okay? Clean side of the sponge. Here we are now, right? The cleanest side of it, kind of, sort of. And going over the area between the concealer and the contour because what do we not want? Harsh lines. We don't want any lines of demarcation. <laughs> if, you, if you've been here, you know that's my thing, honey. We don't want no lines of demarcation. So keeping it in the same way because on the bottom part of the sponge is where the concealer is. On the top part is where the contour is based on how I did it on this side, right? Keeping it in that same direction and going here. Cause what'll happen if you don't do this is you're going to end up putting your contour color on top of your concealer color. That is not what you want. The whole reason why you did the highlight and the contour is because you want both things to be in the right place. Now, I have been enjoying from that video, cause I did this little mini haul of Black Opal Beauty from Target. I've been enjoying this oil absorbing pressed powder. The color is Around the Clay. Ooh, Around the Clay, girl. Around the Clay, girl. It was a good trick. What are the words? Comment, let me know. This is the Sephora 99 Pro Blush brush. And if you watch my Amazon video, you'll know that I like to use brushes in the best way that it works for me. So I don't necessarily use it based on what it says. I know the shapes and what they will do best and that's how I use the brush. So this is a blush brush, but I'm using it to set my concealer. Just to make sure with all this chitty chat that I don't have any, uh, you know, breakup of the concealer in my creases, which are natural. They're going to be there. Gotta do that. And now I gotta clean my hands, take the powder, <laughs> I made this face, and 
type off the excess? Maybe, maybe not, honey, because this is giving me pigment, okay? Praise God. Getting this area and bringing it up. Ooh, this color is so good. This powder is really good. The coverage is really, really beautiful. And the angle of this brush is so good. It's a little bit pointy, do you see? So it goes right in that tear duct. This is my first time using this particular brush. I've used Sephora brushes in the past, of course, but not this one. I like this a lot. Hello. Okay, okay, okay. Now that is light. <laughs> and it's a pressed powder, so there isn't gonna be much pigment. I've been loving this right here because what? It just chisels everything out. You know, give this a little bit of practice at home. It might look wild and crazy, but to me, the whole face gonna look wild and crazy as you're learning. But that's the whole part. I had my crazy makeup face. If you cared to take the time because I began on IG, honey chow. But to me, it's motivating. Go back and look. You gotta look through a lot of posts, but you gonna see some like, oh, oh, okay. You know, it's very humbling or whatever because I did not always know what I was doing. Praise God, right? Practice, hi. This is the Elf Cosmetics Camo Powder Foundation. The color is Rich 660N. I did a video where I used three of these products on my entire face. It was gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. And then I just take leftover and go under my chin. I'm not adding any more product just to further, ooh, ow, hi, wow. I've been loving this powder brush too. This is Sephora Collection number 80. <laughs> And my powder, Dark 4G One Size Patrick Star. It's a powder foundation. You know, I like to build up the face. And these are all light layers. So it's not like my face feels tight or heavy. And going on top of all of this, I always use a face powder. This is golden, which I love because it really warms up the face in the most beautiful way. No matter what foundation I use, I'm always putting on a powder foundation. Ew, ew, ew. Hi. Oh my God, I'm so annoyed. So I, I'm getting laser treatment. And if you know this, you know already, and I've had several so far. And I'm lasering my sideburns as part of the full body laser. So I'm looking like, what's going on? It, the hair is growing back in a very weird way. That's how laser treatments are. The, the hair grows back strangly and then it is completely gone. So the way it's growing back is giving me this curvature thing. I need to shave my face. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> Okay, so here's a finished look. This is one of my iterations of the soft glam look. I just used the Sephora eyeshadow that I showed you. Really pretty, really simple, brown, smoky eye. And I love this lip combo. Mm, 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 mm. I could have made the lip stain lighter by using maybe 66, the Sephora cream lip stain, but you know, this is a good vibe as well. Comment and let me know what you think about this look. I love the face. It is feeling matte. It is looking matte. It is comfortable. It has come together. I do like it. Oh my God, I might be a Dior stand right now. I know they've got the glow foundation, so let me know if you want me to review that one, but I'm liking how this looks. So what I'm gonna do is actually do a wear test. I wasn't planning on it, but let's do a wear test and see how this looks later on today. I will check in and we will go from there. Wear test check-in, it's now 5.07, and my face is looking glowy in a healthy way. It's not completely matte, and I didn't use any primer, so this is just the foundation by itself. Get you real close up here, 
to see my skin just looks like skin well, my skin looks like skin right it looks like it's been lived in for some time it's been several hours obviously i think it still looks good i could of course blot my t-zone obvi but i have not and i'm gonna do my best to leave it like that and then check in with you in a few hours but so far i would say it looks really good it's just not completely matte what i can also say is it still feels dry so although i know that i'm oily in my t-zone naturally i don't feel greasy and oily it could be that it is not extremely hot outside i have not been sitting outside in the sun so all of that does make a difference but naturally as you can see my skin is going to produce oils most if not all of our skin will and this is how it looks but i'm going to check in in a few hours and let you know how it looks at that point all right it is now 8.03 p.m. and I did blot my face one time. My lip is off because I was eating. Whatever. And uh, you know, I like the foundation. The matteness or non-matteness of it isn't a problem for me. The problem that I'm feeling is that it is more red than I would like for it to be. So it is more cool than I would like for it to be. <sighs> I can't lie, it's Dior for God's sake. So part of me is like, girl, give it another shot, you know? So I will give it another shot or two, but I'm really feeling like it's much more red than I would prefer. But other than that, I mean, as you can see, it is not completely matte. I mean, what foundation really is, again, it, it depends on your environment, what you're doing that day, where you're going. Just depends on a lot of things, right? The mattification of it all. If you've tried the foundation, comment and let me know what your experience with it was. This is the darkest shade, which is also unfortunate because I was thinking perhaps if I got a different shade, it would the undertone would be better for me, but this is as high as it goes. But comment, let me know. Thanks for watching the video. And I'm going to leave two options for you to pick from to watch another video of mine. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.